Agnes Ambubi on her way to work on her push-pull field this April. She has been using this method to grow maize for 12 years now and it has dramatically changed her life and that of her family. A mature push-pull field needs regular attention from sowing to harvest. But nothing like the initial effort required to establish one to replace a field ravished by the striga weed, infested by the stem borer and lacking fertile soil. At 52, Agnes can look back on a real success story after plucking up the courage in 2002 to try out the then still quite new push-pull method and can now look forward to many happy hours with her grandchild. How quickly did she succeed back in 2002? The yields changed. In fact, the first trial I had twice as much as the one I used to get before the 20 kg. That I got a 70 kg harvest. After the second season, I now went to 70 times 4, 70 kg times 4 kilograms of maize. So it really changed and made my life easier. And this is where it all started, at the Ambita campus of ECP on Lake Victoria. ECP stands for International Centre of Insect Physiology and Ecology. It was here where Professor Kahn developed the push-pull method in the late 1990s, based on the age-old principle of intercropping. But as you can see from the countless test fields, the research continues to optimize the method and to face up to fresh challenges. One of the aims of the push-pull is to eliminate the invasive weed striga from the maize and sorghum fields. Don't be deceived by the pretty pink flowers. The weed is a real killer for its host plants. It literally attaches itself to the roots of the host plant and drains all the nutrition from it, thus stunting its growth severely and sometimes killing it outright. The other big pest is the stem borer. Their larvae first feed on the leaves of the maize plant and then go on to bore into the stem, causing severe damage. So what can be done to eliminate these pests? This is a classic push-pull field. On the right, the maize is intercropped with desmodium, which repels the stem borer with its scent. Push. On your left is napier grass, which attracts the stem borer out of the field. Pull. Desmodium also prevents striga from growing and generates valuable inputs for the soil. Ahead are two fields planted simultaneously. The first was intercropped with desmodium and surrounded by napier grass, which not only attracts the stem borer out of the field, but also kills their larvae by secreting a sticky gum. The crop is healthy and will provide a good yield in a few weeks' time. And now look at the maize plants in the control field, rife with striga and teeming with stem borers, and also lacking the healthy soil as it does not benefit from the desmodium's input. And this is Professor Kahn, the scientist behind the push-pull method. He is checking the progress of sorghum plants intercrop with different plants to check their strengths and weaknesses. So what are the biggest challenges facing push-pull today? The biggest challenge which is facing the push-pull technology is sufficient quantities of desmodium seed, which are not produced in East Africa by local seed companies. We are working with the seed companies, the local seed companies and smallholder farmer groups to produce sufficient seed. The second is climate change. We're changing the climate, the, the desmodium, which we selected several years ago in 90s, the silver leaf desmodium and napier grass is not able to withstand the long, longer drought and, uh, and, and the hotter climate. And so intensive research continues at ECP. This experiment shows that it is the secretion of the desmodium's roots that kills off any germinating striga weeds. In this setup, 
The water runs through a pot of dysmodium and then continues through a hose to water the maize plant below that had striga seeds put in its pot, but none germinate, as they would if the pot was just watered directly. In another experiment, maize plants are fed with different amounts of nitrogen, showing that growth slightly improves with more chemical input. But if dysmodium is added, as in the pots in the background, growth is spectacularly improved. Finding additional means to control the stem borer is another focus of the research done. The effectiveness of natural enemies such as these parasitic wasps is being tested in this laboratory. Interestingly, these wasps are attracted by some wild maize varieties found in Africa by emitting a specific scent as soon as stem borer eggs are laid on their leaves, another fascinating approach to biological pest control to explore. The smodium and napier grass have proven to be excellent fodder for livestock, increasing milk output of cows considerably and adding another source of income to the push-pull method. Goats also cherish the tasty fodder. This sarnen goat is waiting impatiently to be fed from what is being shredded before her eyes. The side effects of the push-pull method are also being investigated in depth at ECP. Getting the right mix of the two ingredients can improve the effect. And if new varieties are introduced, they also have to be tested for their quality as livestock fodder. One of the biggest challenges for the push-pull method is climate change. The longer droughts and the torrential rains haunting the region require a lot of additional research, but also further training of farmer groups, either on the ECP campus or locally. The use of drought-tolerant brachiaria instead of napier grass and green leaf instead of silver leaf desmodium has already proven to be a great advantage in drought-ridden regions. Other African adapted Dismodium species are being tested for possible incorporation into the push-pull system. Back at the farm of Agnes in the second half of June, two and a half months after our first visit, the field is looking healthy, promising a good yield. Agnes is meticulously checking progress in the field. She is most grateful for the turnabout in her life thanks to push-pull. I moved here in 1996 after inheriting this farm from my husband's parents. So the year 1998, my, pas my husband passed away in April, and so I was left with the kids and I was jobless. A fate shared by many women in Africa, normally with dire consequences. The year 2002, I decided I saw some good farm somewhere and I noticed it was a technology from the ICPE. For my first time, I got a very good yield on my piece of land, which was giving me totally nothing. So I went on with the technology, which I'm still practicing up to now. It has really helped me for I've been able to educate my kids. Apart from the good yields in the field, Agnes has been able to keep cows, which she is feeding with napier grass and desmodium, and with her chickens, she ha also improved her economic situation considerably. And right now I have Florence, who is an orphan in class A7. We stay with her here, and we, we depend on the farm entirely. I feed my dairy cattle from the small farm, I cut the fodder from there, that's the Smodian Napier. And I also get, my soil is now fertile. Uh, cultivation on the farm is very easy. I don't have a lot of work to do. I've also hired a laborer who assists me on the farm as well. And I'm comfortable. Comfortable? Cultivation is easy? Hiring a lander's neighbor as a laborer? Taking in a 12-year-old orphan from the neighborhood, looking after her grandchild while her daughter is working, Agnes does not rest on her laurels. She is a very generous person, driven by a feeling of responsibility for all those around her. Um. 
Professor Kahn is very happy with early adopters of his method, such as Agnes, and he's keen on their feedback on any developments that might affect push-pull in one way or another. Four times more. So he is surprised to learn that Agnes has adopted the drought-resistant green leaf desmodium on a test basis on one of her fields, wanting to find out for herself whether ECP's new solution was good for her. I understand Africa is going to face a problem of drought, so I planted it in comparison, but I've seen it to be the best, because even when there was a short uh, drought, it kept on uh, doing well, and I harvest it for, for my dairy cattle. Deborah Sande is a close neighbor of Agnes. She's also widowed and has two grown-up daughters. She adopted Pushpull in 2003. In 2010, her husband died, but she continues to work her land successfully. Her crop looked very healthy, promising good yields back in April. Unlike her neighbour, who copied push-pull from her, but lives too far away to put in the work needed to get the method going, the difference is drastic. Deborah is checking her field again two and a half months later. Everything is just fine. But so is the field of her neighbour, who finally realised that more input was required if she was to succeed. The contrast of the conventional field in the back is dark, so there is still much potential for spreading the method. Local farmer groups are key to disseminating knowledge about new technologies and methods. Agnes and Deborah are both members of this lively group in Ebukanga village, but today only Deborah is attending as Agnes is addressing a conference for people looking after orphans. Sharing experiences helps all those attending to optimize their approach, and the scientists get valuable input for further research from these exchanges. It is August now, and this year's first growing season is over. Agnes prepares her harvest for selling and storage, and she is very content with the outcome. I thank the push-pull technology for giving me the knowledge to get enough to, to harvest my maize, and I'm very happy because soon I'll, I'll be a rich woman. The sun sets over the ECP campus on Lake Victoria. Much remains to be done. Ensuring adoption of push-pull by more and more farmers is now one of the top priorities. A future for all, naturally.